All right, recording should be live-ish. We'll see if Scott's cell signal is good enough so he can actually talk today. I know a lot of times it depending where he's at. <laughs> All right. I don't know if he's even, is, is he actually in? He's in, but I don't know if he can he's hear. He's unmuted and his camera's on. I can hear you. There we go. There, there I can go. see his hair. There, there he is. There you go. Hey, everybody. In the myth. Hi, Scott. Gabe, what's going on? I owe you a phone call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gabe is making things happen, guys. Is he pulling? Is he pulling you out of retirement? Because that's what we were talking about earlier. <laughs> I know. I got your text here. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've seen that. So. Yep. Uh, it's okay. Gabe and Jor pull me out of retirement. <laughs> awesome. So, awesome. Yeah. That's been fun. Hey, might we be able to do breakout rooms tonight? Uh, that's a joke. I can't run them. You can't run them? I can't. Joe can, though. Yeah, we can do them. You want to do a breakout right. room? Okay. Okay. Is there something that we have to do to turn the captioning on? Because I don't see it now. I mean, not that we need it, but. It said that it was. It's um, not there anymore. No, mine, it's not on mine. Well, okay. it's been enabled. Uh, let's see. We'll admit Marlene. And let's see. Anybody can see it. All you fancy Vegas people from last week missed the. Uh... The blended meeting where we had closed captioning going and Alex was there without an interpreter and was still able to ask questions and interact. It was pretty cool. Beautiful. So how'd the blended meeting go? Um, it was really good. The only thing that went sideways was uh, we had a little bit of technical difficulty based around not telling people they had to wait for an iPad before asking questions because nobody could hear them. But other than that, it went really well. It worked. I, th I think that makes Freya the only national RIA chapter that can do a blended meeting. I want to, I want to commend Andy. You, you did a great job putting it together. You really did. It was a lot of technical stuff going on. We couldn't figure it out, but you did. <laughs> it's a problem when you have too many hobbies. We appreciate you, Andy, very, yeah. very much. Yeah, Andy, yeah. Many people on this meeting. All right, this is not my meeting though. So why don't you guys why don't you guys kick off and get this thing going? Right. Meeting. I'm gonna go get a beer. Scott, you want to kick it off? You're the man, the myth. No, I told you it's your meeting, Joe. I'm joining your meeting. No way, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. All yep. right, uh, I'll kick it off with you. I'll let you I'll let you uh, get you situated with the breakout rooms. Um, Welcome, everybody. This is the Aries meeting, uh, the Alternative Real Estate Investment uh, Association, where we talk about, which most people know, we talk about everything having to do with real estate, except for landlording. We kind of stay away from landlording. There's a whole separate meeting for landlording. You talk about tenants and toilets till your heart is ever so content. Um, we focus on, it's pretty much, you know, it's open forum. And uh, anything having to do with real estate, uh, whether you're wholesaling, buying, holding, fixing, flipping, looking for money, giving out money, uh, notes, whatever, uh, we'll answer to the best of our ability. Don't take what we say as gospel. Um, always consult your attorney and uh, definitely your accountant, okay? And for those of you who want to talk about tenants and toilets, there is a uh, housing providing meeting that actually Carl Weeks who's also on this call also runs. Uh, that is gonna be next Thursday night, same time, same place. Um, and then there's also gonna be, there's also a morning meeting, which is also run by, I know by Beth and, uh, Beth and Bob Napier and Pat Gallagher. And then there's also the monthly meeting. I don't know what the monthly meeting going into November is going to be. I don't know if anybody knows. Of course I know. Yes. <laughs> oh, Leon, the pres president. What's the meeting for next month? Um, right now, currently, we have um, 
Errol McCray, who's going to be <clears throat> originally he's going to be talking about wholesaling and what I had a discussion with him. And basically, he's going to talk about a smorgasbord of items and outline where he is from a real estate investment standpoint and get thoughts and input and talk about things with the group. So, um, so that's what the plans are right now. Perfect. And that's going to be the second Thursday in November. Uh, oops, Correct. I don't have the date on that, but um, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll um, I, I forget offhand, Joe. That's all right. Yeah. So, but if you have questions, you just go, just go on the free website, ffreia.com uh, to take a look and you get, you get all the information, you know, that you need in regards to the meetings I know some of them are starting to become in person. Some of them are blended. Some of them are still on Zoom. Um, so uh, you can definitely go there, go there and check it out. Hey, hey, Let me you, just interject uh, here uh, yeah. real quickly. Our intention is for this to be an in-person meeting uh, with the Zoom, the Zoom connection like we had in our October general meeting. Uh, unless we get something changes drastically, that's going to be the approach that we take. Okay. So, um, and just looking forward to being able to uh, to do most of the week meetings in that way. And you know, to Carl's point, um, I'd actually took my phone off a mute, but he beat me to the point to the punch, so to speak. And um, it wouldn't be it would not be possible for us to do this without. Uh, the help and dedication that we've gotten from Mr. Andy McQuaid. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we were just talking about that actually. Thank you, Andy. <clears throat> Would not be possible at all. Thank you very much, but I'm just going to sit here and drink my beer because <laughs> it's almost <laughs> it's almost Friday. <laughs> I love Fridays. Only two more days till Monday. Oh, God. Remember that. Leon, one last question: Is is it the combined meeting at the same spot? Are we, are we going to Da Vinci's or what, what, what it might be? Yeah, I mean, we're going to. Um, the question uh, right now, plans are to be at Da Vinci's. Um, we had a little bit of technical. Well, Da Vinci's was not open on the second Thursday in October. Uh, we've had discussions with them. Mr. McGuire called and uh, made sure that they were aware of the fact that we wanted to have the second Thursday for up to the next year. So, so I mean, that's, that's, that's the intent right now. Um, and right now, Da Vinci is also the place that we're looking to have the holiday party. So, and as a... Uh, <clears throat> As uh, you know, Joe mentioned, uh, Mr. Joe Lalabera, to be uh, specific, uh, you, if you go to the website, you'll get a lot of information. And clearly, right, our approach right now is to put not to put a whole bunch of things up there <clears throat> because the only thing constant in this universe is change. So, <laughs> any other questions? Nope, think we're good. All right, back over to you, sir. Thank you. So we want to kick things off for people. Uh, basically, we're going to be doing breakout rooms here in a couple of minutes. Um, at the same time, we'd like to give people an opportunity to be able to s let us know what you're looking for. If you have something you want to sell, we call us the haves and wants. If you have something you want to sell, let us know, because a lot of us are looking. And if you have something that you want, let us know, because a lot of us come across stuff which we may not want, but may be perfect for you. Uh, anybody want to let us know what you're looking for? Uh, let me start, um, Joe. Um, any, any burnouts or serious rehabs uh, needed, uh, please contact me. I'm in that market at the moment. I do have... I partnered up with a with a with a buyer on that, so uh, we're active on in that arena. Perfect. 
Also, if anybody on here is new, if this is your first Aries meeting, make sure you speak up and let people know, uh, partially so we can welcome you and partially so if you have questions right at the beginning about the format, we can answer them. Yeah. And, and there's also a chat room or a chat box. Uh, don't be afraid to put your information up on there or, at, or uh, also be able to contact us through there. Okay. Yeah, I mean, fundamentally, you would expect that people will use this meeting. When you look at the structure of what we have, we have general meetings where we have presentations. Um, when we have the meetings with the subgroup leaders, that's so that you can ask specific questions, get specific information, and begin to utilize all the members that's on the call to help you build your real estate business. So it's important that people sort of chime in and not be bashful for the sake of better words. Yep. yep. Hey, Joe, I'll jump in. This is uh, Dom Rodriguez. I haven't been able to make a lot of the meetings because my kids have had sports, but luckily they are done now. Um, I'm looking for more buy and holds. And since you mentioned it, I'm always looking for more money. <laughs> You know who isn't. Um, so I figured I'd throw it out there. Definitely in the one four six zero nine area. So if anybody has anything, definitely reach out to me. I'll put my contact info in the chat. Perfect. Who else? Let us know. Good evening. Um, my name is Ruth Tobert. I was invited by Pat. This is my very first time here. Welcome, Ruth. Um, thank you. Um, just information session for now. Um, I did really purchase my first um, double property in February. So I'm all new to this whole thing. You're in a perfect place. Thank you. Great. Who else is looking? I know we're not the only ones looking. I just want to introduce ourselves. I'm Bernie and Edie Hoffmeister. And my wife is eating. <laughs> yeah, we we uh, we've been realtors for about thirty years. I've um, been an investor for about twenty five years. Um, just you know, we we have some, uh, quite a few properties. Uh, just uh, Brian Spear turned us on to this to uh, this, this group. This group, and uh, just wanted to say hello. Welcome, hello. We might know Brian Spear. Yeah, okay, welcome. We're glad you're here. He's my brother. He's the brains of the outfit. I'm the good looking one. I always say he's. Uh, <laughs> Why is he on this meeting? <laughs> I don't know. He's, he, I... he's tired. <laughs> he's already in bed. He's glad you guys are here. Yep. You get a perfect spot. And, and what were your names again? I'm sorry. I missed your names. Bernie and Edie Hoffmeister. Okay. Welcome. Yeah, we, we're pretty much Orleans County. We, uh, we invest, uh, we rent, uh, pretty much uh, Orleans County. We like the owner hold ones. <laughs> okay. So, so do you guys do Albion in those types of areas? Yep. You, you yep. know, a lot of times I'll get stuff on Albion, but I don't always have somebody as a go-to person there. So I'll definitely put my information up on there, my Joe Buys information, and then uh, we can definitely reach out with each other. Uh, because sometimes I'll get those and those are, those are great leads that just fall by the wayside. If I have nobody, nobody else to put, uh, you know, to, uh, be able to send them out there too. For anybody who doesn't know Joe, he's probably the most prolific wholesaler in Rochester. So that's, that's how he makes his buck. He might have some properties that he pretends to manage, but <laughs> I stay busy. <laughs> I try to keep up with everybody else. Um, anybody yes. else? I just want to make sure people understand your statement is not true. Everybody's trying to keep up with you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the compliment, but nope. I'm just doing what I got to do. Uh, uh, Tom, are you new? Are you new to the group? Yes. Okay, great. Yes, I am. Good evening. Just a uh, first time visitor here. Just wanted to check out the resource and uh, learn more about the group. What actually goes on there? We have a couple of rental properties. We've done some investing, some uh, fix and flips, uh, held mortgages and such. So, uh, just interested in learning more about the local resources. Perfect. 
you're in a great you're in a great place here right now. Thank you. Yeah, welcome, Tom. Glad you're here. Yeah, this is the meeting for anything and everything that doesn't actually involve property management. So yeah. okay. nobody's going to be crying in their beers tonight. This is this is this is everything but property management. Yeah, thank God. Yeah. Thank God. No tears. Thank no God tears tonight. Okay. Yeah. See us, okay. See us next Thursday for that drama. <laughs> yeah. So I have a I have a question for AOL Kismet, Orland County, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, what's the major city in that county? Probably Albion. We okay, do you're... Medina, Lindenville, Albion, Waterport. We live in Waterport. All right, you're, you're on the west side of Littleport. Yeah, rest, west side of Rochester, right? Yeah. Yes. You realize you and I have an AOL.com. You and I are the only ones left, right? You know that. Right, right. <laughs> we the actually whole have world. like three addresses, email addresses, and we... <laughs> Uh, we also okay. sell real estate for Howard Hanna, so we have oh. a different address for that. We have. She's a it, 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 tells, it, it tells our age. It's how old we are now. <laughs> AOL, AOL. <laughs> yeah. It's been good to me. <laughs> I, I remember AOL.com. I was in high school. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and by the way, I put my info, I put my phone number on the chat box for you guys. I definitely want to get in touch with you guys. Good. I constantly get stuff out there in Orleans County and I could just, you know, I never know what I'm going to get, but it'd be great at least to be able to pass it along because if it's not going to be for me, you know, instead of just, you know, going nowhere, we can always, we can, we can get in touch with each other. Perfect. There's a few different Rochester Facebook groups too that mm -hmm. pretty much everybody is in, three members and, and other smaller groups and there's constantly stuff out in Orleans County that everybody's always looking for. Anybody got a buyer in Albion? And nobody ever responds because it's a Rochester-based Facebook group. So everybody's just crickets. So it might be good to find some of those and join them. Yeah. And, um, our favorite restaurant happens to be in Orleans County, being a foodie. Uh, Zan Bistro's. Oh, yeah. we were just there. Man, love that place. That place wow. is awesome. We went for Are you people who live Friday. over in Webster? You don't know what you're missing. You gotta go to Zan Bistros and Medina. It's well worth the trip. Especially yes. having the the new upper level op open air. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. His mother actually yeah. sells real estate and started in real estate with our our company. Oh, okay. Not with Howard Hanna, but with who we worked before. She's a hairdresser. She knows everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. So. Huh. so um, anybody else have anything that they want to put out there for us? Hello, I'm Stuart. What do you got, Howard? Howard, right? Yeah, yeah hi, 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 everybody. Well, they're both talking. Wait. Howard and Stuart are both talking over each other. So let's pick one. All right, Stuart, you go. Okay. I've been on this for a long time, I don't think. I'm looking around to see and investigate taking one of my apartments, making it into an Airbnb. <laughs> If anybody has any experience doing that, how they run it, how they do, and how they're doing with it, just would like to know. All right, we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll we can go over that after the haves and wants in the breakout room. So we okay. can definitely do that, Stuart. Okay. Okay, thanks, Joe. Perfect. Cool. All right. Okay. And then Howard. Hey guys, um, <laughs> I've been an investor in town since two thousand and eight. I have a number of properties. Uh, I'm getting a fairly reliable trickle of off-market deals. I really would like a, a local sources for hard money, and I'm specifically looking for that. Yeah. You, you got a bunch of them on this call right now. Yeah. So, a right bunch now, of them. Like four, four or five that I can see right off the top. So Put your but, information in the chat box, Howard. They're going to mail you cash. <laughs> looks like looks like Raymond's got his hand up as well. I don't know if he still still intends to expensive cash, but Ray, Raymond's hand is up also. I don't know if he's gonna turn his camera on and unmute or what he's doing, but he's on. I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. So I um just wanted to ask the buyers what was their criteria as far as sixty five percent or seventy percent minus the repairs or. Um, what were their criteria? What were they looking for? That's all. 
Yeah, it's a, it's a, that's a great question. We'll go over that after the has and wants. Okay. And, um, and we'll def yeah, don't don't go. Yeah, we'll def definitely be going over stuff like that. That's not a problem. Okay. And, Thanks. Um, uh, I am looking for self storage. I'm going to say it before Joe does, and I pay bigger wholesale fees than Joe does. So, <laughs> okay. Ooh, out there shots see, fired. That's right. Anybody out there who sees self storage, call me. I have a. I, at this point, I only have a couple more than Joe. It won't last very long because Joe's going to come on like a. Scott's got nine storage facilities. No, I don't. No, I don't. Not yet. We didn't close on them yet. I was going to say, didn't you sell one? Yeah, you know, seven. seven. Oh, I'm sorry. He's got seven storage facilities. I'm sorry. Yep. He's closing on two more. Yeah. Wait, what now? I'll have to catch Where's up the... on him. So oh. you walked away from Chicago. Where's the new one? Uh, let's see. Uh, right here, Roanoke, Virginia, and then another one in uh, outside Mobile, Alabama. Nice. How yeah, close? Mobile, Alabama ran into a little problem, uh, financing wise. Guy let us down the road and poof, just disappeared. So we're not sure what happened with him, but we were able to secure other financing on it. It, it, the financing was expensive, but the upside in this is it's just it's just a business cost to us. It's like, OK, the money's going to cost us 10 percent and uh, we're giving up 10 uh, percent hard money and uh, we're giving up 5 percent of the equity, too. So uh, I probably should have used my own money. But you know what? We just went in, grabbed it and said, OK, we'll take him. He's helped us out before, so I'm willing to pay him the, the uh, fees that he's looking for. Hey, but Scott, I got, yeah. I got a, I got a question. Do you see a, any kind of significant difference in running self storage between different states? Are there different uh, rules and regulations that are different? Yeah, Carl. Thanks for the question. That's definitely something we can ask after we go through the have needs and wants. Okay. Uh, but every state has its own rules. It's like uh, even New York State, you know. So <clears throat> a little different. I could talk about that so later. Since you're since since you're talking about your Roanoke place, how how close away from uh, the uh, Pebble Creek and uh, Honeywood Apartments are you? Oh, do you know? I I I could Google it and find out. Okay, just wondering because I have an in there. If you're interested in doing some oh yeah cross advertising and getting your mm -hmm. stuff up there, one of my actually my largest client when I was at Depot that was spending seven and a half million dollars a year for me, I used to fly to Roanoke every month for them. So I'm very familiar with the, the foggy can't get out three terminal airport. You come to Roanoke every month. I did. I don't now. My next trip south is uh, I've got 10 days booked at a Airbnb in uh, Hilton Head. Okay. So on the island. So Pebble right. Creek Apartments and what's the other one? They're adjacent. They actually touch each other. They're both basically the same complex, but it's, uh, okay. it's Honeywood is one and the other one is Pebble Creek. Anyway. Okay, I'll check it out. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. And actually, you could you could do the pines as well. They own the pines also, so you can put the pines in there. It's just a few miles down the road. Good, good. Anyway. Or have them once for you, Scott. Before I go, just self storage. I always let Joe go last, so that's why I want to make an impact. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm looking for singles, doubles, uh, actually residential, commercial, residential. Um, we're also looking at industrial and storage space, which is what everybody else is looking for. I uh, will do in and out of the area. Um, numbers wise, you know, people ask me what kind of numbers we'll do small deals. We'll do multi seven figure deals, whatever, and everything else in between. Okay. My contact information is in the chat. Joe buys to see my number, just give me a call. Anybody else? Joe, me too. Um, you know that every week. Uh, I'm just going to put a backdrop in my screen now. I'm looking for storage anywhere in the U.S. So I have to be <laughs> You know, that's I love it. the bigger, the better anywhere in the U.S. except for California and all the others, high tech states. And um, if anyone's got one, um, just remember me and remember my, my pretty face and uh, and I'll uh, do what I can. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. All right. All right. Colleen Baracci, you got to have something you're selling. 
Jeez. I got all kinds of stuff that I'm selling, but I got all kinds of buyers begging me for it. So uh, at this moment, um, something that isn't selling. I have a two family um, in the 19th Ward on Fillmore Street that we're reducing the price by $5,000. It's got two long-term tenants in there. And um, there was a, a there was a two car garage that was holding up the um, sale of it last time it was on the market. So we put it back on the market. And what price will it be when we reduce it five thousand dollars? It will be um, great tenants in there too. Nice charm in the house as well. Uh, it's listed at seventy nine nine now. It'll be down to seventy four nine tomorrow morning. And I. I'm surprised it's still sitting there, honestly. I think it's because it was on the market before and it didn't sell. People think that there was a problem with it, but the only problem was the garage that's no longer there. Oh, so, wow. And that's yeah. a two family? Two family, yep, what, what 57 getting, Fillmore. What are you getting for rent? Um, hold on. Uh, they, they're they're very long-term tenants. They've both been in there for years and they keep the place pretty decent. Um, yeah. The rent is... is 650 and 700, which is yeah. low for two, two bedroom apartments. Shouldn't that be right around 100? It, no kidding. I, it is a like the only thing, it doesn't have a CFO. You'll have to get a CFO. Um, but it's a decent house. I'm, I'm shocked that it's still sitting there. It's 2,080 square feet. Um, I, I don't know why it's still sitting there. I really uh, don't. Negotiable. What's that? Are they negotiable? Uh, well, they just dropped the price five thousand. I don't know That's how much lower you can get them to go, but That's you know, a start, Colleen. Everybody's negotiable if something's on the market for more than a week. Okay, <laughs> Colleen, how many houses are you up to this week? I know I asked you that last meeting. How many? How many are you up to now for the year? Uh, uh, two hundred and forty-six. I think. Jesus, was this you, you sold forty or twenty-five houses since the last meeting. Yes, <laughs> yes, five. Yesterday, just and, and uh, to different people, not even to, not even like one guy buying five houses. It's five different contracts. It's you know, it's wow. it's insane, totally insane. Awesome. Awesome. Loving it, loving yeah. it. Yeah, hundred. <laughs> That's twenty four a month. You're turning one a day. Oh well, our average right now, um, we we shoot for thirty a month, one a day. Yeah. So, That's bonkers. Or, yeah, well, congratulations. Enjoy it while hey, it lasts. It took 35 years to get here, okay? <laughs> it's well, well deserved at this point. <laughs> hey, you got one in Brockport, too. Could be owner-occupied. I do. We just got an offer on that one, actually. We did? We Whee! did. All right. Yeah, not, not a woo yet. We're working on it. I know. I know. <laughs> okay, We've good. got a couple more showings lined up, too. So Good. That's a nice one. I like that house. I don't know why it's, it's unique. It's unique. It's got that big barn with it. It's, I love it. Yeah. I, yeah I, it's, I, it's, right next to the park. I mean, really it there's it's yeah. I don't understand it. I am with it. I'm the money lender on that one. And I'm puzzled. I'm, I'm shocked. Yeah. Flabbergasted that it hasn't sold. I thought for sure it would have sold immediately once the renovation was done. I just can't. You cannot explain this market right now. Yeah. Oh, and I see the uh, 47 Fillmore is the address somebody just asked. I'll put it in here and I'll give you the listing number two. Yeah, this, this actually might be exactly what Dom was looking for, actually. <laughs> just it's listening good. to what he has for at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. right. There you go, Dom. You better call her before I, I say, do. I say it's my, uh, my sleeper. Somebody's going to discover it and be really happy. Dom, um, just before you put an offer in, just make sure you say one dollar higher than Joe. <laughs> I'm going to give Dom fifteen minutes. That's it. That's his head start. You must be one dollar higher than Joe. All he has to do is do fifty thousand and one dollar because you know Joe. That's what Bing. He's wow. He's coming in hot. Wow. That's so funny. That's the exact price I had in my head. I, I know you. <laughs> We know you. We know you, Joe. You, that's the exact <laughs> price I had in my head. Mm -hmm. Fifty thousand. Well, better than half. Do Usually, you go half. Mm -hmm. I mean, if for fifty thousand, if you put ten or twelve or fifteen thousand dollars into it, you're still getting it at somewhere around sixty-five to seventy cents on the dollar afterwards. After it's all fixed up, you have a nice spread left on there. 
So yeah. you can either keep it, rent it, or flip it. And it's gonna, it's gonna, uh, you know, the reason why it's being sold is not because it hasn't been a good investment for the people that own it, but it's a partnership that is dissolving. And I've sold um, 20 of their houses so far this year. Um, and this is like the, the, one of the last three that they have. So 50,000 cash, Colleen. <laughs> I know where the purchase offer. Hey, like I always say, every deal is cash when you get to the closing table. So just gotta That's true. give oh, us man. give us some money. <laughs> I think she just burned you, Joe. <laughs> every deal is cash at the closing table. Oh, yeah, I love Joe. Oh man. All right. We what's, got, we um, what's it gonna take to get it fixed up to get CFO on it? How much so, take you uh, up the exterior it? had some peeling paint, but when okay. they demolished the garage, they addressed the peeling paint. Um the exterior has like four different sidings to it. Uh, you know, like the back side is vinyl sided. Then there's um, uh, wood siding on another part. I think there's composition shingle on another part. It's kind of you know cob jobbed, but it's it's not an ugly house to look at. It's just it. The partnership has been um, struggling for a couple of years now over a difference of opinion on how to maintain the properties. One person wants to maintain them correctly and one person wants to not spend any money. So um, that's why a lot of the properties they were selling were sold without CFOs and needing a little bit of extra love. You call that deferred maintenance. Yes, that's what we call it. <laughs> we call those. Um, all right, anybody, anybody else? Anybody else new? Hey guys, my name's Tim. I am brand new, just trying to maybe get my feet wet a little bit. Um, I'm kind of here and I don't even know if this is the right place, just educating myself on, you know, how to get into the real estate market, what to do, just, I guess, researching for a little while. And, you know, when I feel ready, I you know, I'm looking at probably like a single family homes mm -hmm. uh, east side of Rochester. And that's really all I got at this point. Yeah. To, to, awesome. No, you, you're, you're in a great place to learn over here, Tim. Mm -hmm. and, this uh, is this, really this meeting. Yeah. yeah typically, our haves and wants don't go this long, but we've just got so many people looking for stuff over here. But it's a great, at least it lets people see exactly um, what, you know, what people are looking for. And it's good that you spoke up because at least lets us know what you're looking for. And obviously when you're a beginner, uh, you know, you're going to look for something that won't need too much work, but it at least, you know, gives us an idea of who's looking and, and there'll be something that, that, you know, that comes our way that we could actually pass over to you and, or you can also connect with also with, with a lot of us too. Okay. Awesome. Great. I appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. This, this, this meeting, Carl's meeting next week if you're interested in learning about property management and stuff, it laws and regulations and whatever else is impacting the real estate market here and the rest of upstate New York. And um, the general meetings, obviously, but biggerpockets.com. If you haven't been there yet, go there, sign up, get into the Rochester group, get into the upstate New York group, and just start absorbing information from there, listen to their podcast. That's one of the best places you can go for, for starting off. It doesn't help you build your network, but it does give you some background information so you don't sound like a complete noob. Awesome. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, we're glad you're here, Tim. It's, yeah. um, it, you're in the right place to learn, that's for sure. You talk about people who are willing to help. We all got where we're at because a lot of people helped us. And you know, us, the veterans in this group, we're still learning. You know, I learned a few things already tonight and, um, you know, it's just kind of a give back and that's what we do in this group. So keep coming back. So Scott, you want to do the breakout rooms? Have any questions? What do you want to do? Yeah. Scott? You're going to breakout rooms. Uh, for anybody who hasn't done it, what's going to happen is the screen's going to pop up a little pop-up window and now you just click on enter that room. I'll give Joe a little bit of time to set that up. Uh, Joe, I'm thinking let's go like three to four people in a room. Let's four is probably fine. Um, that, this works a lot better if you turn your camera on. If you don't turn your camera on, you're like 
somebody said what did he say oh it's like showing up at a at a freedom meeting in person with a bag over your head that's exactly what it's like what we're gonna do we're gonna go into breakout rooms we people four people to a room and we're gonna talk about uh your goals for 2021 um where are you at goal wise and what can we do to help you? And that's why I like getting into a smaller group because you guys really can get together and brainstorm a little bit. And um, <clears throat> I just want to talk, what, what would you like to accomplish, whether real estate or personally, by the end of 2021? We're looking at what, two months and 10, nine days. That's it in 2021. Um, what we're going to do maybe towards December or January timeframe, we'll talk about your 2022 goals. Um, if, if you want to share, that's great. Um, but it, it could be just be a small goal. I want to lose five pounds by the end of the year. Uh, I want to buy a rental house. I want to connect with two people over a cup of coffee. Yeah, just something simple. Start something small like that. And then um, just, just repeat it to yourself. Say you're going to do it by the end of 2021. Um, if you want to close on something, what day do you want to close on it by? Because I've done this before with guys in self-storage. And there's somebody on the screen who came very, 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 very close to doing it. And just because of some things outside of his control, it didn't happen. Um, just say but, it's okay. I know you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, Gabe was so close to closing the deal on self-storage on his data. It just, it just some things got in the way that was not, that was not Gabriel's fault at all. Um, attorneys, real estate, brokers, it, it just turned into a mess. But anyways, you just kind of reset that goal. And that's okay. It's okay to reset your goal. But if you put a date on it, your mind starts working like, okay. And even when you're sleeping, your mind's working saying, okay, I'm going to close on a house by December 10th. And somehow it miraculously happens. Or you're going to have someone under contract by December 10th. Your mind just starts working and it's amazing how it works. And all of a sudden things start coming together. Um, so... I will say for Gabriel, even though the deal didn't come together, it's a huge learning experience for him and for me. And, um, and uh, I know he's going to hit the, the next one we got set up. So, is everybody cool? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Andy. Uh, Scott just went through this Thinking Grow Rich, my yeah, favorite right there. book of That's all it. time. Right anybody, anybody that really wants to achieve your goals, Man, that that that's that's the go-to book right there, and I, I could tell Scott that, that was my mantra right there. And I, I could tell Scott uh, that he he drew all what he just said from that book. All right, so Joe, you ready to send us right. into breakout rooms? We will see. We will see. They move right. the controls around. So when you go to the breakout room, introduce yourself if you don't know each other already. Yeah. Uh, where you're at in real estate right now. And what's something you'd like to accomplish by the end of 2021? We'd like for everybody to share. We'd like for everybody to turn their video on. And yes, even you, Brandy, I'd like to see you turn your video on. How long are we doing? How many minutes? I'll uh, think about it. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect time. And then we'll, then we'll all just come right back in 10 minutes and automatically take us. Yep. Some people may be <laughs> muted out, so you may have to unmute yourself, depending on if you're going back and forth. Yeah, so you click on the window that pops up. Send you to a breakout room. You'll be in there with three to four or two to three other people. And then um, at the end, it does like a 60 second countdown. If you don't click the button, it's okay because you're networking. Um, then, you, um, uh, then you'll come back. Everybody should come okay. back to this. Everybody will come back to this room after. All right. Ready? Okay. What? <laughs> and Leon. And Leon, this is, this is, I love you guys, but this is a terrible room. <laughs> I mean, it's probably good for John if he's there. <laughs> Have I met John before? I don't think I don't recognize the name. He was in a meeting. I don't know if it was last time or a couple of meetings ago, but I recognize the name. I don't know if he spoke. Hello. Yeah. I'm Hi. Here. Hey, yeah. How are you? Well, I've been here off and on for I don't know six, eight months, maybe longer. That sounds about right, probably. Oh. Yeah. Know. Yeah. So. I think I send you silly messages, Colleen, on Facebook or something. So. Oh, that could be all right. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Who's your friend there? Uh, yeah. Every time I talk to the computer, she thinks I'm talking to her. So this is oh. a constant companion. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Awesome. Got a good um, 
And I want to smack Scott for saying that I couldn't be on without having video because I had a facelift done last week and I have a freaking bandage around my chin and I didn't want anybody to see it. And I feel like everybody can see it now. We can't so, see shit, Colleen. It's fine. Coming okay. clean. Yeah, you're okay. It's fine, Colleen. You got it. Good, good. Good grief. So, John, what are you looking for? Uh, that magic spot, I guess. Uh, same as everybody. Um, I, we, I've, I've met up with uh, one of the guys that showed up, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago at the, one of these meetings. Um, he's in Batavia. Uh, his name's Michael. Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah. I remember that meeting. Yeah, he's a pretty good guy. Yeah, we, uh, we partnered up. We're going to do a little wholesaling, I guess. He's been finding properties left and right. We're putting offers in. We're just waiting for that one that's going to take it. So. Nice. Uh, are you cool. out that way or are you in the city or where are you? I, well, I'm in Gates. Uh, okay. But I work in Buffalo. So, you know, oh. I can pretty much go anywhere. Yeah, uh, right. I haven't had a property, uh, two different properties last, uh, when was it? I don't know, early in the spring in Syracuse. Wow. Oh, wow. So I kind of, I'm really not, I don't care where I go. I just want to get something going. That's all. Um, that's awesome. I, I've got one and two, actually two in Buffalo right now. We're trying to, uh, get together uh the one is a woman that passed away i guess she got this big piece of property it's uh 15 acres uh i think it's a 1900 square foot home older home all redone i guess got two different pole barns all this stuff going on they paid like a buck 20 for it two years ago and they're asking 375 so wait is this in syracuse in, in jamesville no it's uh oh my God. you go transit road north in buffalo just as you so yes, it's you, actually out because there's a, there's one that's almost exactly like that in Syracuse that somebody was asking me about a couple of weeks ago and I was like, yeah, that doesn't that that doesn't add up. <laughs> no, no, I know it's like uh, that's some pretty high appreciation right there. But uh, anyways, uh, it's a friend I think by the sounds of it that's handling it. So tomorrow I'm hoping to go take a peek at this. And then uh, there's another elderly couple in their 80s, I guess, that have a similar setup, not as many acres though, um, on the south end of transit. Okay, and uh, they're asking three or no? Uh, they said they had an offer of two hundred. The guy was gonna uh, redo the work, him redo do all the remodeling himself. He wanted them to hold paper, and they're not too keen on that. And somebody else, another guy, put an offer in like a hundred and a half, and they turned it down. So and it appraises right around. I think it was uh, in the two ninety range. So, but there's some issues I found with like, uh, there's a, a drain line that comes out of the house, some water drain that goes in between their house and the neighbors because I spoke to the neighbors and uh, she was making a big deal out of it. So there's probably gonna be some work there and some other stuff. And they got this in-ground pool and it, it needs work. It, I mean, by the time you get done, you're probably gonna be right around 270-ish, I'm thinking. Mm. But so, you know, it's things like that. But then there's a few houses in the Batavia area that Mike's been finding that, uh, you know, we have to do a little research on and, you know, see if we can throw some offers in on them. Awesome. Um, kind of hoping to generate enough cash so we could possibly, like in the spring, start doing some flips. You know, I'd like to get a couple of flips going. I have a construction background. I've been in uh, commercial construction for 31 years. And so, I, you know, Joe and I, that's how I hit it off with Joe so much because he used to do construction. So, uh, We've talked shop a little bit, and it's like, you know, I'm not afraid to do the flip, you know, the construction end of it all doesn't phase me. It's like, bring it on, you know, I'm game, but it, the numbers got to work. They got to make sense. And it's just mm -hmm. this year, I mean, it seemed like everybody was doing something but me. <laughs> so, you know, we're hoping this wholesaling thing will turn out. So, and then after hearing Colleen, how bad she's crushing it lately, it's like, wow, it's, <laughs> that's awesome. It's been nuts because, you know, with the tenant eviction moratorium and everything, um, you would think that there would be no buyers for the properties that I'm trying to sell right. that have deferred maintenance and non-paying tenants. And mm -hmm. we have not encountered that problem at all. There is no shortage of buyers right. for those properties. Wow. That's amazing. So, yeah. Yeah. Sure. It's been very good. We've had a lot of rentals come through in the city and I was a little apprehensive to even attack, uh, to look at it because they were at list price. Yeah. And they needed work. And it's like, well, there's no room for anything there. So we just stuck by them. And, you know. It's still quite competitive. Like I said, you know, like that one on Fillmore, I, I'm telling you, the only reason they they listed it too high when the garage was in bad shape because we couldn't get a CFO without demolishing the garage. So I had them take it off the market, demolish the garage, touch up some of the paint on the outside that had been peeling. 
um, and put it back on the market. Um, and that should have sold. It should have sold immediately. But uh, huh. the history of it, I think, makes people think that there's something wrong with it. And yeah. I just need to get one person in there to look at it, and they'll see. I mean, there's gorgeous natural trim. I mean, the kitchens are kind of run down because the tenants have been there. One's been there for 15 years, I think. The other one's been there like 11. Sure. So, you know, it's they're, the kitchen floors are the old uh, one by one stick on tiles or whatever, you know, but honestly, both both apartments are good size, great tenants. Huh. Yeah, it's yeah. a good one. It's got to find that magic customer. That's all that regard. Exactly, yeah. But, uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't really know what my goals are yet for next year. It's just, uh, I want to try to steer towards the flipping. We, we, we're trying to do as much wholesaling as we can between now and January. So that's our main focus right now. Cause we, you know, that way we can generate some cash and then get back into it again. Cause I, I went back to work, uh, about five or six weeks ago in Buffalo. And, um, that's good because that's paying the bills, but it, sort of hinders me time-wise on this, but I've been doing it evenings and weekends. So, you know, plus, like I say, you know, we're stopping on the way home from jobs at different homes to look at places. So, you know, we're just kind of going with the flow and see what happens. And, uh, hopefully things start popping a little bit. And, uh, it, you know what it seems like now, I might be wrong, but what it seems like is homeowners seem to think that their houses are worth a freaking huge amount of money. Because that they're hearing it's a seller's market and they're yeah. being told that their houses are worth a large amount of money. The, yeah. the mistake that a lot of sellers are making, though, is they're listing at, at what they think their house is worth right. selling for, but not understanding that buyers, when they're out there looking right now, they're not looking at their max uh, amount that they can afford. If I've got a buyer that says they can afford 200, right. I'm not showing them anything over 150. Right. Because we know we're going to be in a bidding war, and that's right. where a lot of sellers end up in trouble. Because they say, "We know our house is worth two hundred. We're going to list it for two hundred. Right. They're not going to get the buyers they need to get out of it. You know, right. so you'll that's get true. it if you list it at one fifty, and right. it's worth two hundred. You will get it. But a lot of sellers don't understand that concept. Are you seeing a lot of fruitcakes still that are going out there and putting in offers, and then they can't close the gap between a, the appraised value and the market value? Yeah, but some of the banks have come up with gap funding, like GRB oh. has a gap funding program. So if you're if you've got good credit, they'll give you X amount of dollars to cover the gap. Like I've got one client right now, she can get up to forty five thousand dollars in gap funds. Wow. Yeah. Yep. How are they doing that without another loan on the and property? It is. It's a second. It's a second loan of sorts. The way they created, I don't know, but it is a. It is. Yeah, because there's some sort of laws against having an additional funding outside of a traditional mortgage on a house yep. with a note or something. So yeah. I don't, I, I'm interested to see how they get around that. But more I'm power to sure. them. All right. It's a portfolio situation, I would imagine. I don't mm. think it's a typical lender program. That makes sense. It's kind of like Canandaigua National Bank has their own thing. I yeah. GRB is doing something similar. Um, I also heard that uh, premiums doing something like it too. I'm not familiar with pre premiums program, but interesting. Yeah. Very. How about that? A lot of creative re creativity in this market right now. Oh yeah. Well, it's still one of the cheapest housing markets in the country. So it is. I know. I mean, the taxes is what kills you. I'm to the point now with the reassessments going on in Wayne oh. County. It's I'm going to be actually paying more in taxes than I pay in my mortgage. My mortgage is five sixty a month. I'm oh, going to actually God. owe more in mortgage in, in taxes every month. Oh my gosh. Than I do to my actual house payment. That's Wayne County? That yeah. hurts. Yeah, that hurts. Yep. Oh, no. oh. Well, you know, I, I had a conversation with Joe, I don't know, a week or two ago about uh, the pricing and everything. And, it, it, you know, he's like, well, you, if it goes too high, the bank won't appraise it anyway. So it's like the buyer's kind of stuck, I guess. So, or the seller, I mean. So, um, that's kind of what I have to convey to this person I'm seeing tomorrow. Hopefully, I'm seeing tomorrow. Yeah. Um, well, the, you know, there's you a know. lot of a lot of the people covered the gap with the 100k they could take out of their 401k penalty free. Exactly. That was where a lot of people were were coming up with the money as they were. Yeah. Just there's a lot of stupid money accounts. out there. That's what I call it. Stupid money. Yeah. Yep. But it it it's kind of a game that they're playing now. Everybody's into that win win mode and. You know, when they've put in 26 offers on houses and you're this close to getting one, they're willing to go a little more stupid and pay a little bit more just to get a house. They're That's at that point. So, yeah. Uh, 
Well, I mean, now, okay, how are they doing it? I mean, they must be putting a lot of cash down because the bank's not going to go over what they appraise it, right? No, the bank won't. They do have to make up the difference with cash. Yeah. Yep. And yep. a lot of the offers we're accepting, we say you have to make up the difference. You have to show us proof of funds to right. make up the difference before we even accept your offer. Yep. Right, right, yeah, because, I mean, it could be, so it could be 80, 90,000 on some of these houses, so. Yep. That's yep. crazy. Wow. All yep. right. Well, That's crazy. So we got about 30 seconds before the room's close. Leon, you were very quiet. <laughs> He's listening and enjoying. He's muted, too. Taking <laughs> in the sight. <laughs> No, it's, uh, I don't know. It's, you're still, you're still muted, Leon. You got to unmute yourself. Leon, you're muted. He knows. <laughs> okay. All right. As long as he knows he's muted, that's fine. Okay. There you go. I, I, was, I clicked on like four or five buttons before oh. I got it unmuted. <laughs> so, but, um, oh, dear. Yep. No, I'm, I'm listening uh, in, intensely. Absorbing. You need a beer in your hand. I'm just saying. No, 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 no beer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <Baca>? Anyway. <laughs> All right. We're out of here in five, four, three, two. Oh, no, we got a minute left. So we're good. <laughs> you lied. I did lie. It started hey, Jen, the timer. It was nice to talk to you. It's nice talking to you guys, too. It's, you know, I really I see you guys on here all the time and I just sit quiet. And... Yeah. No. Oh, it's, Joe, Joe and in. Scott like the uh, the breakout rooms. We don't do this usually, so in yeah. any meeting, but this one. So. It gave Thanks. me an opportunity to think about um, all those things I need to get done between now and the end of the year, in about five different spaces. I pray of being one of them. Oh boy! Well, I've got thirty thousand dollars more in in invoices I have to write before now and the end of the year, and I'll be happy. So you got to get See, paid. That's, well, that's one project. So I'm not super duper worried about it. I just actually did a bid for 30 grand like three days ago. So there you go. Now you can we'll stop see. working. No, it's an eight, it's an eight week project. Four, so. three, two, yep. one. Bye guys. I can see your back, Joe. You're filing papers. Perfect. Awesome break room. Good stuff. Yeah, it was great. Scott back. I have no idea. Did you leave? I'm back. I was gonna say, did he pretend to have technical issues or what? Yeah. I don't know. Actually, I was down, down earlier. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have to turn on the hotspot or turn on my phone. Um, so, everybody find that beneficial? I hope. Yep. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, like I said, it's a good little way to network, get to know people on a more personal level. Uh, we made a connection in our room. We have somebody who's gonna. A brand new investor is going to take an experienced investor out for lunch or breakfast. And I thought it would be the best 20 bucks you ever spent. Um, so, oh, uh, Andy, what was the name of that book? We just want to confirm. Oh, Think and Grow Rich. All right. Where are we? I, have, I have a copy of it, along with about a million other business books that I've collected in the last 25 years. But, yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, so I think every time CEO, that's, that's, that's the question. Of I'm sorry, Lou, Lou go ahead. <laughs> I, was, I was just, I was just saying he's got a lot of books, but has he, have you read them all? Yes. Very nice. Very nice. Cause I got books laying around here. I haven't read yet. Oh, <laughs> I, well, I'm not all of them. I think I bought six last week and I've read one of them prior. So like I bought yeah. four Simon Sinek books cause I don't know. I like, I like his Ted talk. And then, uh, I picked up a uh, Jordan Peterson book. Ooh, no, Jordan Peterson. But I wanted to read it because everybody, they either love it or hate it. So I'm like, oh, whatever, I'll read it. So I bought it. Yeah. So, all right. so Scott, I don't know if you wanted to expand on the, um, on the uh, breakout rooms or questions or you, you, how do you want to, what do you want to do, Scott? Would anybody like to share what their goal was for 2021 for the group? If you don't, that's okay. We understand. I will. My goal for the end of 2021 is to find a mixed use property. <laughs> okay. Where are you looking for a mixed use property, by the way? Honestly, I'm open to all over Rochester for right now. I don't really have a zoned in area. Um, it's just one of my goals that I want to. Now, now the reason why I'm asking you 
is because you should have told us in the haves and wants. Want to I, know? Thought, I, I, I thought about it after. I know, but I didn't want to take up from anybody else. So I'll tell you why. Because I had somebody bring me a mixed-use property today. Perfect. I'll just text you right now to remind you. Call me tomorrow. All right. I will. <clears throat> that is the power of speaking up. Right there, people. What's a mixed-use property? Call me tomorrow. <laughs> X, X used, used to have a, a restaurant, has apartments up on top, uh, and then we'll, I'll go over it. I don't, have, I don't have it completely locked down yet. I'm getting all the information, but um, I'll, uh, if, if somebody's interested, you got, you got my number, Dan. We can go over it tomorrow. I, wa yeah. I want to go over people's goals or uh, with, with Scott. I didn't mean to interrupt Scott. Oh, no. No, I'm glad Dom spoke up. Well, that's the thing. We, um, man. 2019 we used to meet together in person i'm going to say there's probably well over five or six million dollars of properties transacted within this alternatives group that never hit the market okay that's power of reaching out and touching and 2020 i, I bet we probably did probably three million dollars in this group that never even hit the market you know just by networking like this I'll bet you it was more than that. <laughs> I, I think. You know me. I'm conservative, Joe. I can guarantee you that was more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Had a feeling. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, anybody else have any, any goals they want to share? My goal is to keep networking within this group, establish a pipeline of capital for deals, and establish uh, – a deal pipeline as well. I, I have one, but I want more. Right. And how do you think you can uh, do that with this group? What are you gonna? What steps are you gonna take for that? Well, that's that's a great question. I mean, I I did put it out there that I'm looking for uh, sources of hard money, and it was mentioned that there are several people in the room here who do that. So uh, I have put my contact information uh, out in the chat space. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm a serious investor. I've, I've, I've been around a while. And um, I, I am very, very serious about uh, doing this. I'm, I'm not looking to increase my holdings right now. I'm just looking to make cash. Uh, what I also did not put out there also is that I need uh, I need a good uh, property appraiser in, in Rochester. A good appraiser? Yes. Okay. You willing to pay for it? Yes. Okay. All right. I don't want, he's not going to walk down the street, shrug his shoulders and say, yeah, I can't. <laughs> yeah. Eh, 200 to 300. You know. <laughs> How much do you want it to be? <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, uh, one thing to think about, there are some, and I know Colleen Baracci and um, Mary Jane Griggs, uh, they're vendor members, they're also realtors, they might get you some market comps if you want some comps. Um, if it's okay with Leon, I can put a, a real estate appraiser who is willing to do appraisals, you know, he's not going to do it for free, but you know, he does appraisals for Quicken Loans. And Leon, if it's okay with you, I'll put his contact info in the box. If not, because he's not a vendor member, I understand. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I mean, you should feel free to, to put it in there. I mean, in general, we probably would say have him become a vendor member, but in this case, one time should be okay. Okay, I'll pop that in the chat box. Thank um, you. And now you said something interesting. You said uh, I. Did you say I don't want to increase holdings, but I want to increase right now? Right, right now, no. Uh, generating cash is a more uh, immediate need right now for where I am in, in life. And how do you plan to do that if you're not going to pick up any holdings? No, no, no. I mean, uh, uh, holdings for three months to six months is fine. But I'm, I, but I mean, right now I don't have a, a long-term strategy to increase the my portfolio. Oh, okay. That so I, I didn't say it exactly right, right. So get in, get them under contract, lock them up, do what you need to and take them and sell them. Is that what you want to do? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. 
And with your properties you have now, do you have some equity in those properties? I do. Okay. I do. Uh, I, I, I probably have a better idea of how much after their uh, appraised. Appraise. Okay. And the reason I ask that is that's very valuable to a money lender because they probably loan you on a property that's tight, but if you're willing to cross collateralize, put your money where your mouth is with the property. If you're willing to put up your other property, maybe some equity in your other property towards a loan, trust me, they're more than willing to make the loan to you. So the equity in the property in question wouldn't be enough or? It, it might have what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on what it is. If you're getting a $100,000 house for 50 grand, yeah, there's enough equity. Somebody will loan you. Right. Right. But if you're looking for like 70 grand on a hundred thousand dollar house or 80 grand, they might say, well, I'll loan you the 80, but I need some more meat, you know, meat on the bone. So they might ask you to cross collateralize one of your properties. If you know what I mean by that. I do. Okay. They know they'd be in second position if you already have a mortgage, but right. um, when I was lending money, if somebody said that, well, you have experience, that's a big plus for you. Um, and you have other properties too, so that you know that's all a plus for you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else? Teresa, are you new? Did you just join on? I did not. I have okay. been here. Um, this is my second meeting. Okay. I'm newer to the group. Um, this is only my second meeting, but um. I was discussing in the breakout meeting that um, I'm fairly new. I am a real estate agent, but I'm not practicing. Um, I am interested in, in wholesaling, looking to build some capital so I can purchase my first property to buy a hold. So that's where I am. Great. Well, as you hear, you got a number of buyers in this room. So. Awesome. And Shane Hurt has been very, very quiet, which is surprising. He buys a few properties. I do know that. He's probably got his daughter sitting on his lap again. He's not talking, turning his camera on. There you go. I got his number. I know how he works. They're sleeping now. Oh, all right. Well, I was probably close, kind of. Mine's still awake. I don't know if he's eight. I can hear him in the other room. I'm just glad you guys can't hear him. All right. Um, let's see. Anybody have anything else you want to bring up? Any of their goals or anything? Scott, can I say uh, something real quick? Um, yep. You know, I we were in the breaker room. We really didn't talk about it, but I was just thinking about it, the, our goal 2021 and stuff. And I just want to reiterate how, how much, what you told me before, to go to the calendar and, and just mark a date and a goal date and and how much it works because I know that one deal fell through. And so without thinking when that deal, when that first deal fell through the one in Yorkshire, without having given, without missing a beat, I went to my calendar again and November 8th is my goal date for getting a storage unit under contract. And I'm going to tell everyone here, guys, it freaking works. I mean, 24 seven, I'm thinking about it. Like just last Tuesday, I was coming over from my mom's house and I was thinking to myself, how can I just develop better systems to make cold calls and stuff? And, you know, and I was just going to my head, like how, you know, I just, how I can make better systems to develop things of my, of my new business and stuff. And just, and it's just the random times I'm just thinking about these things. I'm like, because I don't want to reach that day. And to that end, I'm always thinking about it. And, 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 you know, I'm going to tell you, there's, it really, 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 truly works. And it's, it's a godsend. Thank you. And I'm going to thank you, Scott Percy for that, for teaching me that. And man, it to everyone else, go to your calendar, not, not your iPhone calendar. No, get a wall calendar, circle the sucker. And I'm telling you, you'll look at every day and it works. It really works. The, the power of desire. Um, Scott, I, I stepped away for a minute, but I was in my break room with uh, uh, Dom. Is he, is he still on? Where'd he go? Dom Gonzalez. Looks like he ran away. He, he he's not on. Away? He's not on anymore. Okay. He, then, then he's trying to get a hold of Joe right now on that mixed use property. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, right. My story is defunct at this moment. Okay, so no problem. We'll move on. And 
Do they have a list of the members and their phone numbers? Some people on this call are not members yet. <coughs> Looking at you, whoever you are, you know who you are. Um, but uh, there, there are um, member lists up on Freya.com. We're still kind of working out the bugs in the system because it's an opt-in. And people don't know that instead of an opt out from having your, your information published to, to other members who go to look, there's an opt in that you have to choose to have it shown. So um, there's only like, I want to say less than a third of our actual membership that's up there uh, listed. So it's not super useful, but um, we can get you in touch with people if, if there's somebody specific you're looking to reach out to. We've got very large Rolodexes full of thousands of people in the Rochester area who do real estate. So yeah, are we good with uh I don't know if I want to get the questions or yeah. Yeah, let's go questions. And do you remember the questions, Joe? Because I know some people had them and I yeah, some people had some questions. Uh, and by, by the way, this is open forum. Obviously, you see, uh, people who are new, you can see that here. So don't be afraid to just ask your question. Raymond, some... Raymond had a question. And I'm trying to remember who else had a question. There was one other. Raymond. I, yeah, I just wanted to know about the, um, the criteria, the buying criteria, as far as uh, three bedrooms, two bedrooms, one bedroom, 65%, 70% minus uh, repairs. Um, what's your your criteria, buying buying criteria? Joe's is half of whatever ARV is minus 30%. <laughs> um, it's uh, <laughs> um, you know, that's, it's, you know, people ask that question um okay everybody's different and it also depends on the location raymond like if you ask okay. how much do you pay for a three family well if it's on park avenue it's a lot different than if you're talking you know you know you know somewhere else you know yes, sir. you know so if you're talking east ridge road clinton avenue all those other areas so it's just gonna depend on the numbers i always tell people you gotta leave enough meat on the bone so at least that way it's going to attract people you know right right um, yes sir you know, and some people are just focused on certain areas. So um, you're going to just, it's all going to boil down to price. I mean, for me, that's what it is. I'll do $5,000 deals and we'll do, we'll do million and a half, $2 million deals. I don't care as long, as long as the numbers work. All right. Okay. That's just what I was trying to get a baseline of. Uh, yeah. I mean, you guys. most people, they want to be, they want to be after it's fixed up. They want to be somewhere around 65, 70 percent uh, after after they that includes that includes repairing it, you know, because right. you, want, you want to be able to figure out holding costs, closing costs, commissions, and we'll leave enough room for, for a profit. Yes, sir. OK, perfect. Thank but you. Some people are different. I knew one guy. He needed to be 75 percent and he was good. And then okay. other people were like, I need to be 60 percent. Mm hmm. You, you'll, okay. you'll get different criteria from different people. Okay, gotcha. The answer to that. Yep. If it if it cash flows, there's probably a buyer for it somewhere, whether it's a good a good deal or not. There's this group tends to be a little bit more conservative, and and I think it comes from the mentoring and the coaching side of make sure that you're going to be able to get out of it if if shit goes sideways and and not lose your own personal assets in the process. Right. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. Yep, it's always better to be safe first. And uh, a lot of real estate investors, that's the approach they take. Um, Joe LaBarrera, Leon Griggs, Carl Weeks. People have been around for a while because, um, well, I mean, I know, I know what it feels like to get burnt. It's not funny at all. Mm -hmm. so, and so, uh, and the key thing is, you won't always look at the numbers. Uh, there are a number of things, and we probably couldn't go through them all now, but I mean, clearly, um, you got to sort of set your base. What is the number that you're really looking at, and what are you comparing it against? Uh, if you got a property 
that you're looking at the after repair value of it, then you, uh, and, and that's your base, then you need to go through the number of, well, how much does it cost to fix it up? And all those other pieces that go along with it, because um, the story of, about the property from a numbers perspective is not just one item. It's, it's a, a group of things all taken together and analyzed to say whether or not this is a deal that makes sense. Yes, sir. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Yep. Yeah. And Raymond, are you looking to do wholesaling? Or are you looking to buy and hold for yourself, fix and flip? Yes, uh, wholesaling until I can get some cash to, to buy and hold. Or I would like to do some creative financing. But like I said, I'm just, you know, still learning and still trying to network and get, you know, make sure I'm confident before I really make a, make a mistake that doesn't need to be made. Just ask questions. I will tell you right now that people on this call, you can call them, pick up the phone, call them and ask if you're not sure about something and they will say, this doesn't sound right or you better buy that now or I'm going to buy it. <laughs> right. That's how it's going to go. And they will not charge you a fee for okay. that. You just got to lay it out right, and be right. honest and put it on the line and this group will take care of you. I mean, last okay. week, Tariqa picked yeah. up the phone and called me, you know, and I, we, we spent some time on the phone. So yeah, what Andy just said is beyond, beyond correct. Okay. Yeah, I mean, one of, one of the things when you, you mentioned wholesaling, so um, I don't know whether you put your contact information um, in the chat, but okay, you, I can do that. You, yeah, you have a, you have a whole group of folks you know, a bunch of people didn't say anything in the, in the very beginning when we went through the haves and wants. I mean, if you find something in the suburbs that uh, I don't care what was on the east side, west side, I don't care if it was in Buffalo, okay, um, okay. call me. You, and the key point here I'm trying to make is all these folks like Marlene Schofield, you know, all these folks that you see on the list here, they're all buyers, Okay. So you you need to have your information out there so you can build your buyers list. Yes, sir. So <clears throat> I'll put yeah. my um contact in the chat. Um if anybody needs to reach out to me or wants to reach out to me and wants to also network. Also be proactive, Raymond. You know, there's people putting in their numbers. Don't be afraid to call. And Leon is yes, right. Sir. There's a ton of people here who are looking to buy properties. Okay, cash. So this is what people look for. You know, okay. look you want to buy. This is it right here. There's a ton of people on here who are looking to buy. Yep. Everybody says your network is your net worth. This is a book I picked up in the early 2000s. It is a sales-based book, but it is called The Little Black Book of Connections. Oh, by wow. Jeff, Jeffrey Gittimer. This thing's ancient. You can pick up a copy of it for like a buck. It was 20 bucks new. And it's a really easy read. It's like little, little tiny pieces of information and some funny comics and some jokes and stuff. But okay. this teaches you more about building your, your black book of contacts for business than anything else. Like when I go to my Rolodex now, I have over 5,000 emails and phone numbers in my phone. Like when I go to update my phone, my phone chokes. I can't get my, my address book to load when I plug it into the car. It's like, right. I don't know how to do this. It's important. Old fashioned way, right. Old fashioned way always works. The basics well, it's all, all, it's all digital now, but it's essentially the same right. thing. Yes, sir. Appreciate that. I'm definitely going to look, look, in, look into that book and I'll uh, put my contact information in the chat. I appreciate that. Thank you, guys. No problem. <clears throat> Let me just interject real quickly here. Um, and it's, you can say that I'm being ticky tack, but um, it takes a sort of an extra item for someone to get your information out of the chat. You um, somehow need to incent people to, you know, provide their information to you. I mean, it's okay. a lot easier if you do it if you do it that way versus the way that you're outlining. Joe Lovabero, I saw you shake your head. So, do you? I'm assuming you agree with what I just said. Yeah, be proactive. Absolutely. Don't okay. wait for people to call you because you need to call them. 
Yes, sir. Yeah, I just collected a few numbers and stuff, so I'm definitely going to reach out. And, and, and by the way, for those of you who are new, you know, we're, we're members of this group. The Not only just you're seeing a very small portion of what this group can give to you. Because of this group, it was why I was able to walk away from my job. It was because of this group is why I was able to amass what I built in real estate because of this group and because they've been able to help me. Because some of you who are new, to say I was just like you is an understatement because I was just like you and broke, okay? So just, just the connections alone, when Scott was talking about the millions and millions of dollars in real estate that the public never ever finds out about that happens within this group is an understatement. So for those of you who are looking, uh, some of you are on here for the first time, understand a lot of us here do this full time simply because of the connections we made in this group. And some of you who are new, you're seeing a very small fraction of what's really going on within this group. Yep. Okay. This, this group I'm trades so millions, millions of dollars a year in business gets traded in this, in this group. So that, that book right there, Andy, has made me literally millions of dollars. And I am not kidding. That is one of the greatest books. That book helped me change my life, how to win friends and influence people. I recommend that book to every single multimillionaire I've ever met has read that book. And I mean, every single one. And this was before, this, this was while I was struggling. And I said, if they read it, I had to read it. And I was like, oh my God, that book right there. It my aunt strength of language so this was actually scott's idea to put this up i just have it on the shelf so i pulled it but my aunt my aunt worked for dale carnegie for 15 years Ooh. as a traveling trainer oh. so i grew up with dale carnegie stuff in my house like 24 wow. 7 because all of her children were my age so we were like we caused a lot of trouble yeah that's a great i love that book that so that book. should make it mandatory in schools for people to read that the kids to read it that book has, oh my God, I can't, I can't say enough about that book. Another great one is The Millionaire Next Door. Yep, it is a good book. But well, it's good to, um, good to hear that, Andy. Now I understand you a little bit better. <laughs> my dad owned his own business too. So there's a little bit of that too. Yeah, I mean, back to some of the points that, um, that Joe Lababero was making. I mean, this group, is a group that's made up of individuals who we basically do this for free. It's, it's a not-for-profit organization. And we give our time, we teach folks things so that they can learn and they can be successful. And that's a simple one-line way of putting it. I mean, if you look at the number of people that's in this group, right before the pandemic, we had like 240 plus people that were members, paying members. Right now we're about 175 and everybody tries to help everybody else. That's the main thing that we try to do. I try to do it at least on a weekly basis. Daily, if I can help somebody, I feel fulfilled. And that's the way most of the folks that you see the subgroup leaders, people like Andy McQuaid, people like D. Thompson, I mean, Susan Holman, they, that's, that's what they do. And, and they do it and they, and they feel really good about it. And that's the reward that they receive. Yeah. Uh, I owe this group, I owe this group my lifestyle. It's because of this group. It's, it's just, such just our way of giving back. Yeah, we do this for free people. So just letting you know. It's not to impress you. It has nothing to do with impressing anybody. This is just what we've been able to do for ourselves. And you know what? We went through it. And what some of you are going through, I promise you we've gone through and we're still growing and learning. Um, but yeah, this group is just, yeah, just our way of giving back. The, uh, the other thing with your membership is if you're still not convinced, number one, it's tax, tax deductible as a business expense. Write it off. It's a couple hundred bucks. I don't know. Give up McDonald's once a week or something. The other thing is that 
when you join, you get an email, you go sign up at the Home Depot website, you do some stuff on your account, or we can have somebody help you do that. And you start getting a 2% rebate on everything that you buy at Home Depot. You get 20% off on paint, you get special pricing on cabinets, you get special pricing on appliances. If you're doing anything, even if you hate Home Depot and you're involved in real estate, you will spend over $10,000 a year there. That's more than the cost of your membership. And if you're not a member, Home Depot audited them all this year. And suddenly people didn't get their rebates because they didn't keep their membership current. So during the audit, a bunch of people suddenly lost their rebate that they'd been milking for five or six years. So join. So any, by the way, anyone else have any, I know there were a couple more questions, by the way. Yeah, I've got a couple of questions, a couple new guy questions. So getting back to where you were mentioning a uh, Oh, uh, I guess a three family on Park Ave versus someplace else. I mean, ideally, right. Everybody wants to hit the home run, a really good deal in a really lo good location. Where do you put it on? I mean, as a new investor, I'm looking at it like I'd rather have something in a good location, maybe hit a single the first time, get a good experience, and then start working my way toward the really good deals or do you do you suggest waiting in trying to hit that home run the first time great question yeah great question um so we're going to have about three or four people going to give you input on this one and um i'm not sure that there's any right or wrong answer to what it is that you just asked you know fundamentally i look at real estate investing and i think in the very beginning i sort of took the approach of I was gonna be very, very, very picky. And I think that uh, there are probably safer ways of being successful than maybe dividing it up the way you just did. Uh, and I, the reason why I said that, you have folks who do wholesaling and they just wholesale in some of the worst parts of the city or the worst parts of the country. And that's all they do. And they're very successful. And then you have people, they just do, um, someone was doing, I think it was Dom that was talking about mixed use. And that's all they do, they don't do anything else. They, you have people that all they do is apartment buildings, okay? And so it's gonna, it's gonna really um, depend on where you find your niche. The only thing I would say is that's, a, that's a most important is start. Just start and learn as you go. All right. So real quick, rolling off of that, again, not knowing anything, is a wholesaler just somebody who basically goes and finds these properties that are off market and takes a cut of the deal? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Joe LaBavera is the one to answer that because he's the big wholesaler in the room. Uh, yes. To answer your question, basically... Um, all of a sudden, I'll give you a perfect example. You, a wholesaler will find a hundred thousand dollar property. He'll get it under contract for 50. Okay. And then he'll come up to you and say, listen, you want to buy this property? Um, you can have it for 55, 60,000, wherever the heck it is there. So, you know, you're, you're buying, it's worth here. You're buying it here and you're selling it here. So you're leaving a good enough spread. Okay, because because it also you got to take into account, you know, if it needs work, um, you know, how much is it going to cost? You know, is it vacant? Whatever. But we're going to throw Let's just throw all that to the side. Hundred thousand dollar property. I find it for 50. I bring it to you. I say, do you want it for sixty thousand dollars? You're like, yeah, I'll take it. There you go. Done. Yeah, I mean, yeah, one of the key things, I mean, I think. Wholesaling can be somewhat complex, but one of the most important things is you're not really buying the property. What you're doing is you have created a contract and you are basically uh, providing that person the contract that you created so that they can then purchase the, pro purchase the property itself. So you're really, the, 
the um, the wholesaler is actually uh, basically, if you want to say selling something, they're selling the contract that they have on that particular property. And some people make it a little bit more complex than that, but basically that's what it what it really is. In the very beginning, when people first start off, they, it, that concept is sometimes missed. But but that's the most important and fundamental piece. Joe? Yeah, yeah you're right. And, and, and by the way, uh, the gentleman who asked that question, are, are you looking to buy and hold? Or are you looking, are you talk, you're talking as far as for being a wholesaler? What, what, what are you looking to do? So I'm looking, I mean, I don't, I'm just, just getting into this. So I'm looking in my head is more of a, a buy and hold. Okay. You know? Yeah. So, so you're looking, so basically for you is uh, obviously it'll save you the time of being able to, uh, you want access to off market deals on market deals right now. There's a ton of competition, which everybody knows. So right. getting connected with wholesalers is the way to go. Uh, we never know what we're going to get. I'll wholesale stuff doesn't matter what it is. I'll do $5,000 properties. We've done hundreds of thousands of dollars of properties. It's, it, it all varies. You know, you just gotta, you just, you just have to let people know what you're looking for. Okay. You know, there, Cause there's a ton of people who get properties on this call or on this zoom call that they don't want. It. And the funny thing about it is that some of the people during the haves and wants, they don't tell us what they want. And if you don't tell us, we don't know. And that may be the exact deal you're looking for. You never know. So, so that's why it's so important at the beginning of the call let it, to let us know. Um, so, so you're obviously looking for rental and, and it is a great way to, uh, to find properties. Just, just get hooked up with a wholesaler, you know, again, you know, so some of our, some of our information is, is on, is on, is on the chat room. Okay. So be proactive. And, and I mean this very nicely. Don't wait for the phone to ring. That is the worst thing you could do. You got to be proactive and you actually have to reach out. That's so if I join the group, that gives me access to you to, I guess, this list of, all right, perfect. And you're one of the guys on the list. Yeah, there's a ton of people who buy on here. Yeah, he's okay. a vendor member too. So he's actually on the vendor list. Okay. Any, anybody who runs meetings and volunteers their time every week or two to sync sync here with you know looking at my ugly face uh we we give them you know the ability to advertise their wares and so I, Tim, I just want to sorry i just want to chime in real quick i'm also a wholesaler as well so feel free to reach out to me this is brandy speaking all right and most companies are wholesalers anyways, like Wegmans, you know, they buy stuff cheaper and they resell it for more to us. So there's a ton of, I mean, businesses out there that's pretty much, you know, wholesaling as well, just to kind of piggyback on that. Also, let's touch upon, you know, what you're trying to achieve. Do you need cash or you don't need cash? I mean, do you need, do you need long-term investment? Sure. So wholesaling and flipping is really for the quick, easy, or, you know, cash. If you're looking for income now, wholesaling and flipping is it. If, if, if you don't need the cash now, but you want long-term investing, you want that return on the investment, that's what buy hold is all about. So it depends upon what you're trying to achieve. Yeah, I'm not trying to flip. I'm trying to buy and hold. So with that would wholesalers be more inclined to for a flipper or are there still opportunities for buy and hold? Both. Okay. Both. And, and, and by the way, I mean, I also buy and hold and I fix and flip and I found all my properties through, through wholesaling. Okay. And um, yeah, so there's great buying opportunities. You just have to get and, and, and get in the game as they say and get connected. Yeah. And Carl was 100% right because wholesaling, you'll make money. You will not create wealth. When you're talking about buying and holding, which is exactly what Carl was talking about. You hit the nail right on the head. You want to create wealth? That's 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 when you're talking about buying these properties that are worth 200000 You're buying them for hundred grand and you're buying and holding them. That way you're making money three ways. 
One when you buy it with a price, two in the middle while you're renting, and three in the back end when you decide to sell it. It gives you choice. Okay. How about the like? I know the real the I guess we'll call it the retail market listings that are out there where there's a lot of opportunity or a lot of people putting in bids. A lot of them are going. Sorry about that. Are going no inspections, all cash. I guess being new to this, is it possible? A, do I need an inspection? I mean, ideally, I would like it, but how much of a, a game changer should that be if there's a, a good opportunity that has to be no inspection? I don't know if anyone else wants to answer that. I know, I mean, I have my answer, but I'm a wholesaler, so. No, no Joe, you go ahead first and, and I'll chime in. I'm, I'm gonna go into this chat. Typically chat as a wholesaler, here's the thing. And now, you know, you're gonna, and by the way, because we, we only got a couple more minutes here, but we'll stay on for other people because I know it's 8.30. So we'll do this quickly here. Um, but um, uh, typically for me, if I bring somebody a $100,000 house for 50 grand, I get them through the house, you know, and it has to be quick. Because, um, you know, if you leave enough meat on a bone to choke a dinosaur on a piece of property, right? Okay, you got to be able to move fast. Right. You know, someone, and I mean, it's very nice if someone says, well, Joe, I have to do an inspection. I got to call my brother's aunt's uncle's dog's cousin uh, next. And I mean that very nicely. Okay. Uh, right. But, but, but at the same time, I never want to force somebody to buy something. You got to be able to make sure. So if, if you feel like you need to do an inspection, by all means, do it. You got to go with what you feel comfortable with. And as you as you progress and become more prolific, you'll be able to move faster and quicker. Right. But up front, do whatever you got to do. OK. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, Carl. What? Well, what? Well yeah, so starting out, if you need the extra help in hand to evaluate the, you know, the pre-purchase, the purchase component of a property, I do that for 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 consulting. I'm in the chat there. So, uh, a rental property, you know, you, you want to establish, you know, what 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 are the expenses in terms of 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 now and into the future to help determine whether or not you're going to have a, you know, a return on your investment properly. So it's very important to have the right people in the right place. Uh, you, you, you know, so whether it's a, which by the way, the, 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 the property inspection process is, is, is a point in time of the property. What I do is I evaluate the future income expenses of a property in terms of pre-purchase consulting. So, um, you know, ha have somebody in your camp. You know, don't go this this cold. You know, cold turkey. You got you got to have somebody experienced to help you out. If you're just starting out, until you get experience in evaluating that stuff, uh, have somebody in, in your in your pocket to do that with you. Yeah. Yes, the the value of a mentor is huge in this industry, and the uh, the other thing is you really need a team. And I don't know if anybody's talked about the team yet on this because I got up to get beers a couple times, but. You need to have somebody in real estate who knows what the heck they're doing, whether it's an agent or a broker or a mentor who has those connections or has the broker's license that you need that understands the market. You need a good attorney who understands real estate because not att all attorneys are created equal. If you're dealing with an attorney who is a generalist and they do everything, find a new attorney tomorrow. Yeah, yeah That is number one job. Find a new attorney tomorrow. So, so agreed. <laughs> and you need an accountant that understands real estate and holdings and wealth planning and all of that other stuff that goes with it. And through them, you'll find other attorneys who are really good at structuring corporations and business entities to make sure that you're insulating your personal assets and doing all of your estate planning and all that other stuff. There's a lot to this business. Start small, but you at the very least need real estate connections, a good lawyer who understands the business and somebody who can keep you from going to jail or having your personal assets taken away by the IRS. Those three things. No. No. And you can find those things on the Freedom First website. No. Perfect. 
I don't know if we lost Scott or if he's still on. I can't tell. I just um, muted. That's all. He's, he's taking like, a nap. I talk too much. Um, he's taking a nap. Let's take a shower. Yeah, yeah took a nap. That's right. I know it's eight thirty-five, so that's why I didn't know if we want to. I mean, I can stay on. Uh huh. Yeah, the mattress is getting a little bumpy, Joe. You need to borrow some money from me. <laughs> nice. That's nice. Um, I, I tell every I tell everybody that Scott's got so much money. It's just it's in his mattress. <laughs> He sleeps with a bad back. It's because the stack of hundreds, you know, was. <laughs> I don't know, man. That that RV mattress. I don't know if you can if you yeah. can do that for long without you know having to go into traction the next week. I only have an RV. Joe has a Brinks truck that just follows him everywhere. He needs that. He needs that. Scott's got a mansion on wheels. The other back of the house is a, is is a is a is a, a, a vault. Yeah, he goes over a bump. Stacks of money just falls out. So follow his truck. Right. Scrooge's Scrooge's money bin. There you go. Okay, I know that um, we end at eight thirty. Typically, if you want to go, you certainly can. Uh, we usually network till about nine o'clock. I don't know if we're going to go into that other room, um, but I know Stuart had a question, and Stuart's been a long term member. And Stuart sounds like he's shifting gears a little bit. Stuart, if you're still on, I'd like you to ask your question. Yeah, go ahead, Scott. You sure? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. You get your answer? Not quite, I don't think. I wonder if anybody else did, did Airbnb. I talked, I heard a lot of other things going on, but not about Airbnb, I don't think. Anybody here, Airbnb? Does staying in one count? No. Uh, <laughs> well, just, uh, did you have enjoy it then? <laughs> I, I did, and I have another one actually booked for, for Hilton Head for nine days, so I'll be on the okay. island. Okay, yeah. sounds good, yeah. Now, Stuart, my partner, partner of mine, does does the Airbnb. Um, oh, okay. Hey, uh, Bob Napier did one too. I think he sold his lake house. I think, but he did an Airbnb down there and was really successful with it. He was covering his covering his numbers every year, and he was able to go there and vacation like a couple months out of the year and still pay for the place. Okay. I know you know Bob really well. Then know about yes. Uh, I went down to see that house. That was a heck of a house too. Mm -hmm. That was an eight plus house. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they, they they rented out enough, as I remember, to pay all their bills for that house the whole year, just a few months. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was good there, and then they could. We had we went down there for a couple of parties. I think and stuff like that. Yeah, we did. Together. Yeah. You should reach out to him. Okay, I'll, I'll call Bob on that. Thanks, guys. Sure. You know, I haven't okay. looked at them, but. I just, you know, if there's. I think Chad might be doing them too. I don't know for sure. Okay. Um, Chad Bongart, I think is. Yeah, he, he is. Yeah. He is okay. Thanks. I mean, yeah. I think. I think there are several people probably on the call that has done the Airbnb. Do you have like a specific question, Stuart? Uh, is just, there yeah. something that? Um, that's sort of. I have a friend that I sort of got going in real estate. He turned a place on Park Avenue to two family, turned one into Airbnb, where I guess they, they book the thing for him, take care of it, collect the money and everything else. Is that what they do? They mostly run it for you and you pay a fee for that? No. Huh? No. 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 Okay. Is it? No. They're a listing site, so you can get as involved in it. There's companies that do it for okay. you. you. You list it. You do pay... Airbnb for reservations and stuff, but you have to meet a whole bunch of requirements. There's a bunch of contracts you have to sign. There's a lot of hoops you have to jump through. You have to make sure you've got cleaning crews and normal management and the place is livable and um, that you know your use calendar if you're living there or not, or there's a bunch of red tape you have to jump through. There's five okay. or six different sites outside of Airbnb that people use also, and they all link to like a common calendar. And it depends on how involved you want to get. There's companies out there that will help set up and run your Airbnb if you want to be super hands off. And there's others where you just pay the listing fee to Airbnb and they take the payment for you and do the reservations. But they'll also fight with tenants that wreck your property. Ah, or, they might, okay. or they might tell you, sorry, it's your, it's your problem. And that's usually the way the feedback I, I've heard is that Airbnb really doesn't care about fighting with these people that rent the properties and trash them. 
So you're just out, whatever the damage is. Two grand, five grand, 10 grand. Oh, okay. Wow. So. Okay. Thanks, Randy. Okay. I'll call Bob and see what he, his, his experience has been at. Okay. I think that's it, guys. Perfect. Okay, All right. So we're going to move to the meeting network room or we're going to stay here? Because I'm just stay here. I don't, it's too complicated to explain to everybody how to get there. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun, yeah. but it's it's been a while, and we don't want to melt people's brains with more technical stuff. Yeah. So so Andy, uh, just to show you that you and I are on the same page, I, I got the same thing, dude. <laughs> That's awesome! Oh my god. Yes. No, I just I just have the the old school binding, Amazon, whatever. Many years ago, but. Well uh, I got a question. Are they having the in-person meetings after this? So we do a few in-person meetings a month and eventually we'll, the, the goal is to get all of them to be both online and in-person simultaneously. So November's general meeting. So the one that's coming up on November, is it the 11th? No, what's the date in November. Yeah, November 11th. So November 11th is in person. It's at Da Vinci's of Greece, which is a nice Italian restaurant. But more importantly, they have a fully stocked bar of adult beverages. Um, so uh, that one, there's going to be a member speaking about starting off his career in real estate. And we're going to have a guest speaker prior to that, that Carl is bringing in from a local community group that's going to talk for a little bit. Um, we're going to try to simulcast that. The restaurant has some internet issues that they're supposed to get fixed that we talked about a month ago. So hopefully Time Warner is able to get there before November 11th and address all those problems um, and get them up and running properly, or there will be no blended component. It'll be in person only. That same morning, there's a landlord support group for people who are uh, operating properties for income and they're managing it themselves or farming it out and just want to learn uh, or whatever it may be. Um, it's a morning meeting. It's at Ezzy's on Buffalo Road, um, kind of in Gates, but it's in Rochester. It's 14623, um, but it's the west side of Mount Reed um, in the city, but before you get to 390. So that's, that's in-person only right now because that restaurant does not have any dreams of even having Wi-Fi. So. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. I don't know if anyone has any questions or anything that they want. I know we're just, uh, you know, uh, we're just hanging on just for people who didn't get some of their questions answered. While we're talking about really good books, and I've never heard anybody in this group talk about this one, um, but it's it's pretty old school. It's uh, Winners Never Cheat Even in Difficult Times from John Huntsman. It's like, I don't even know how old, it's old, but it's a cover to cover page turner. You'll finish it in like two hours. It's valid. I like doing business with people who actually have read it. What's that book called again? Winners Never Cheat. That's my kind of book. If I can read it like in two, if you read it in two hours, it'll take me four. But, you know, <laughs> I, um, so, you know, some of these books, you go 350 pages, man. I'll be done with this next year. Well, that's my, that's my uh, principles, Ray Dalio book. That one was, uh, it's a good read, but dang, it's slow. You know, you can go on YouTube and, and, and you can listen to it probably. Or Audible. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I do yeah. Know some people that do Audible and read the book at the same time. They put Audible at like 1.25 or 1 1.5 speed and then read it. I like that. Did you read this one, Scott? Uh, no, I don't think so. This one's good. Also, this one's a winner, but it's not a it's not a two hour read. This is more like several weeks, a little bit at a time, because it's a lot to digest. The guy's a billionaire for a reason. So just say it. Yeah. Let's see. 
I don't have it here. <clears throat> One book I read that's pretty easy is The Daily Stoic. Yep. It's a really good book. It's one page, one day. You just kind of read it. In the, I read it in the morning. I read it before I go to bed. Just gives you some things to think about during the day, like being a better person, how to treat other people, um, how to network, um, just uh, some money management type things. Uh, it's a really, really good book. And like I said, it's just a page a day. That's all it is. And, then, you know, yeah, on December 31st, you just start the book at the beginning again. So I really like that book, The Daily Stoic. Cool, Scott, where's your, uh, where's your next storage facility? I'm waiting for a call from 855 Joe Buys to tell me where my next storage facility is. <laughs> well, it'll have to be Rochester or upstate New York then. Oh, no, I'm looking outside. Oh, no. Well, he's not, you're not going to tell him about those. You're going to buy them for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Oh, um, I'm going to have to call Bank of Scott. Somebody asked about self storage. Are they still on? Who was that? Uh, it was Carl Weeks. Okay, he's gone. He left? No. Carl abandoned us, huh? Can you believe it? I know. Weird. More, more important things to do. He probably has. He probably fell asleep. On fire or plug toilet or something. No, he probably fell asleep at the, at the computer. He's like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, dealing with self storage uh, over like residential real estate. Um, we automate everything. I had one facility that didn't have an automatic gate at it and it didn't have security cameras. And that place was just a nightmare. I, I sold it to somebody local. We made a little bit of money on it. Um, but it needed somebody to kind of manage it locally. It was in St. Clair, Missouri. So, um, but all my other facilities have gates with keypads. We have a call center that's tied to them. People call into the call center. They can go right online and sign up. Uh, auto pay. We put everybody on auto pay, whether it's ACH or charge card. Um, and then, uh, oh, somebody asked about state to state. Yeah, I have facilities in different states. So I have to know the state lien laws. Um, an example in North Carolina, uh, you can lock somebody out. In other words, their gate code doesn't work uh, within five days. I, I don't like that. I wish it could be the next day. In some states it is, but like in South Carolina, uh, you can't lock them out of their facility. In other words, you can't change the gate code for five days. Um, 10 days, you can apply a late fee to them. And then uh, let me think for a minute. And then you have to send them certified mail for auctions and they have to have 30 days notice and you have to put in the printed paper. So somebody doesn't pay, you could be into it for 60 days if you're moving things along um, before you can actually auction out their stuff. Then if you auction out their stuff, let's say they owe you $200 and you get $300 for the storage facility, you can apply the $200 towards your bill, but you have to find them and give them the extra hundred dollars. Now, here's a catch in some, in some states, you have to try to find them and prove that you tried to find them. In some states, you actually have to send it to the state uh, comptroller, I think, either whatever it is, and they take the money under the person's name and then the state holds it. So, um, but the business is good. Uh, the business is super hot right now. It's uh, so many people are looking for storage facilities. It, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty hot right now. Um, and, that, you know, there's some things that work with it. I'm part of Mike Wagner's Storage Rebellion. Uh, I've learned a lot from him. We actually, Joe and I were in Phoenix last weekend, uh, hanging out with like 40 other storage investors from all across the country, from California to up in the New England states, down into Florida, Texas, um, Washington. So, um, but it's a good business. It's been very good to my wife and I. I've only been doing it for, let's see, a little bit over a year now. And, uh, but it's, it's a pretty good business. I like it. So, yep. That's it for me. That's it. I don't know if anyone else has anything. I know it's about 10 minutes to nine right now. So I got something for Stuart. Um, one of the guys from one of the other real estate groups in Rochester started a Facebook group for Airbnb investors on Facebook. 
um, from all across upstate New York. And oh, okay. I don't know. I'm trying to find it. Let me see if I can find it. Okay. Uh, Airbnb. There it is. It's called Upstate New York Airbnb Investors. Okay. And there's 900 people in it right now. And he oh, started okay. this group like three weeks ago. Okay. Um, it was, uh, oh, it was Josh Briner. So if you know, I don't know if he's younger, you probably don't know him. He's uh, got an Airbnb down towards uh, Canandaigua. Uh, it's like okay. his first, it's his first house he flipped. And now it's an Airbnb okay. because he didn't want to deal with the renting thing. So <laughs> he started okay. this group and there's a ton of people from, from here, a bunch of Freya members and just people from Albany to Buffalo. And it's people just go on and ask. So just okay. if you're on Facebook, find the Upstate New York Airbnb Investors Group and join it and okay. ask, ask questions because you'll probably get answers. Okay, okay thanks, Andy. Yep. All right, great. Scott, Dan Graff here. Question. Um, how are you going about soliciting these uh, storage facilities? Just call them up and just say, you, are you looking to sell? That type of thing? Yeah. Um, I'll be honest with you. I, have, I haven't actively marketed for self-storage facilities. Uh, I partner up with a lot of people. Uh, people call me, hey, can we run through the numbers? And, you know, would you be willing to partner up? Um, but, yeah, it's usually... It, it, we've purchased facilities that were making money and in good shape and we got them at what we thought was a decent price um and we we've had others that have been a kind of a heavy lift that needed a lot of work um but we're finding them from people like the mom and pops they're ready to retire out um you know they're in their 60s 70s um they it, we're looking in like the secondary and they call it tertiary markets like the smaller markets we're not looking like in um you know albany houston um but there are deals there i mean we're looking at one right now in panama city and panama city is a pretty busy place um but yeah just um if you see something that kind of looks like it's run down it's usually we've been we purchased them from um kids that have inherited them actually three of them have been kids who inherited them and, you know, just dad passed away and they just don't want to manage it. They have a corporate job or something like that. And it's just not in their wheelhouse to do it. So, so they want to sell them. Um, but what comes to marketing, you're going to have to ask Joe. Joe knows about marketing for them. I, I it's not something I actively do. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry to say, just, I don't do it. <clears throat> All right. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. And Gabe also markets pretty heavy too. So he seems to know yep. what he's doing. Jumping on that one too, please. Um, is uh, uh, I don't know the gentleman's name, but just pick up the phone. I mean, develop your list. What I do is I, um, I go on uh, different websites. I go on uh, Google maps and Google earth and I uh, look at a certain, and I get my demographics from, from 1000 people all the way up to 5,000 people. And I plug it in the city in the Google Maps area. And then I just get the phone numbers of those places and I develop my list and my CRM. But, um, you know, you can develop a database over time, but you just just make the calls, be a nice guy. And, be, and, and most people want to talk to you. I'm going to tell you, you know, they, even the people that say no, they don't want to sell, they love to have a conversation and just, you know, kind of chit chat for a little bit. Some people are jerks. Yes, I have people hang up on me. Big deal. Move on. But, it's it's just got to make those damn calls, man, every stinking day of your life. And Scott and I are hopefully getting one under contract soon. So it'd be good to see. You kind of got hosed on the last one. Yeah. What it do you sucked. use for your CRM? Um, HubSpot. Me too. HubSpot. Okay. Free. Just checking. Yeah. Just checking. Yeah. Free is good. Free yeah. is good. Hey, Andy, and it's I easy actually... to scale. Andy, I was just going to ask the same question. Um, have you used Podio at all, or I don't like it. I don't What's like that? Citric. I don't like Podio. Why is that? 
because I don't know, it's clunky. It doesn't integrate automatically into my Outlook. Like I have HubSpot connected because I have an Office 365 commercial account. I can integrate HubSpot and every email that someone sends me automatically records all of their contact information and all the contact information for everybody CC'd in that email. I think it also does Google, doesn't it, Andy? What's that? I think it also does Google too, doesn't it? It does the same thing to Google, yeah, but I like... I'm a Microsoft Office guy. I was corporate America. So everything I've ever done has always been Office and you get what you pay for with Google. There are a limit to the free things you can do. I'll pay the 120 bucks a year to have a tool I know doesn't like cause all kinds of issues if somebody's not on Google. Yeah. Or on Microsoft. So I wait, are you fact- saying are you saying that Podio is something or has to do with Google? No, 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 no. no. Podio Podio just doesn't integrate well. That's all. Like it's it's a Citrix tool. It's great but it's proprietary. I don't like it. I don't know. Okay. Cause I haven't tried out HubSpot yet. So maybe I'll check into that. Spot's great. It's free. That's the best part of it. Well, it's free until you scale. You start uh, hiring people and getting extra users above a certain amount then, or doing certain activities more uh, than you start paying, but I mean, as my you, can, content- you can tailor it. Like you can, you can use them. You don't need constant contact or MailChimp. Like you can integrate a ton of stuff from HubSpot into your, like you do surveys. Like there's a ton of paid features in HubSpot that you can do, oh, you yeah. can do surveys. You can do mass mailers like constant contact or MailChimp. You can do email lists. You can do newsletters. You can do automated, re, you know, uh, automated pre-scheduled outreach where you don't even have to remember that you're doing it. It just automatically emails yeah. people and makes it look like it's from you because you, you wrote it two months ago. Like HubSpot's great if you're going to use it and you're going to pay for the features. It's it's like Salesforce. HubSpot runs circles around everybody else's product. Yeah, I like how HubSpot though puts all the context together, with all the fields and everything, so I can just look on a screen and boom. And HubSpot lets you track your deals, so you can yeah. see your your cash flow and your potentials and create automated follow up lists and stuff. So. Like Podio does some of that stuff, but it doesn't do it anywhere near as seamlessly. Like I don't have to think. I can go to my my HubSpot and I can look. Like somebody emailed me three months ago. I'm like, I don't have that email anymore. I go into HubSpot. Boop, there it is. Yep. Cool. Dan, to answer your question, <laughs> if you just type in self storage, like I just did, self storage Roanoke, Virginia. Google pulls up a bunch of self-storage units, but honestly, it only pulls up about maybe two-thirds of them. I know of other ones that are out there that didn't even pull up on Google Maps. Those are the ones you want to try to find because those people aren't on the internet and stuff like that. They're less sophisticated owners. Um, and then, uh, but just driving around, it, you know, also find places you want to visit. Like if you have family somewhere, uh, a friend of mine bought a storage facility near Disney World because he likes to take his family down there two weeks out of the year, but he only <laughs> likes to be there for a week out of the year. So what he does is he'll go with his wife and kids one day, and then another day he'll go check out his stealth storage facility. And then, you know, he kind of bounces back and forth. So it's a business trip for him. But, um, you know, that's why he bought that one. Um, places that you want to go, where you have family, where you live, that, that, that's the best places to start looking because you want a reason to go there. Like for me, I had one in St. Clair, Missouri. I had no interest in going to St. Clair, Missouri. And that was probably another reason I sold that one. So, um, but yeah. There's, right. there's a couple of hot spots in Tennessee now with, uh, with uh, all the, the the moves that are coming from Smith and Wesson leaving Massachusetts, they're taking 750 people with them to Marysville, Tennessee, which is a little podunk town. It's about 25 minutes from Zach Darrow. Zach's mm-hmm. like, I'm gonna go by there and I'm gonna look for self storage there and I'm gonna get involved in this there because he's not stupid. He's like, ah, the writing's on the wall. New York is dead. Tennessee is where it's at. <laughs> and then he started trying to talk me into going there, and I'm like, yeah. Someday, maybe. Not yet. Honest to God, seven out of ten people I talk to who are moving are moving to Tennessee. Yeah. It's just unreal how many people are moving to Tennessee. Didn't they say that was an expensive place to live, too? They don't have state income tax. There's no state income tax. Property taxes are half of what they are in New York. You'll pay right. 2300 bucks for 150000 roughly. Yeah. This is like $600 to get your license done, renewed. Nah, who cares? Like that. Who cares? 
I'll do that all day long to not have income tax. Yeah, I hear you. You move you just the fact that the, just inflation alone between income tax and inflation, if just not even going to a free state, going from New York to Ohio, you get a 14% pay increase. If you go to Tennessee, it's 18. So if you're W2 and you're still in New York, you're out of your effing mind. <laughs> get the hell out. What are yeah. you so thinking? And, Andy, are you planning on moving at all? Uh, that would be a, affirmative. Uh, but my kid is in elementary school right now, and we're going to get out before we see high school. So let's just say okay. that there's a, there's a hard line in the sand to be the F out of New York. Because I know I saw a post of yours saying something about getting out. So <laughs> everybody should ask get out. It. Yeah, I'd love to get out of here. Everybody needs to get out. <laughs> Go to a free state. You can still have real estate in New York. You just, why would you want to pay the extra? Get I out. Know. True. Get out from the taxes, get out from the regulation, get out from the stupid. You guys all in? Let's go. Let's stupid go together. Should, we'll go as a group. Stupid should hurt. And it does. Your wallet. Let's go as a group. We'll take free it in another state. There you go. It's remote now. It is. So so you can do it. All right. Um, yeah. Um, I know. I just got done doing my taxes last week with Chris Sardone and what we had to pay for New York state taxes is like, uh, it was, it was a little mind numbing. Um, there's reasons I keep my residence in New York state. I will be changing it down the road, but for right now, you know, that tax bill I paid in New York state was something. So what do we say, Joe? Um, <laughs> many things I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Depends on what Joe you're Joe lost for words, hard to believe. Um, there's some crickets there. Yeah. Not like Joe. Joe said Oops. he wanted to pay more in taxes than he oh, made his true. last W two job, and yes, I think he's uh, uh, exceeded that. So you trying to get him to move, Scott? No, man, he's doing great right where he's at. I need him to sit there and focus and find self storage units for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, to move! That distract him. And get them for fifty percent their worth, right? Oh, all day long, fifty. <laughs> That'd be Joe overpaying for a property. <laughs> oh my God! All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off. It's nine o'clock. Yeah, after Thank nine. Thank you, everybody. God bless. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. If you missed Bye. anything, we'll have the recording up in a couple days. It'll be on YouTube. Perfect.